ladies and gents, and welcome back. We hope you all had an awesome new year, and welcome to 2020. So as some of you may or may not know, Heath and I are brothers, and we're also shoe cobblers. Uh, we have worked on thousands of shoes, every brand across the spectrum, and uh, we are always here to try to educate you all on which brands are the best. And so one of the things that we're gonna do today is go through our top 10 brands that you should avoid in 2020. Okay, folks, so these 10 brands, just to start off, you know, and kind of preface it by saying, Heath and I have owned a lot of these brands, so we're not putting down, uh, putting down you in any way. If you own these brands, we're just saying that we've worked on a lot of these, and based upon the quality and the construction and the materials, there's other brands out there that, you, that we think, you know, would be better fit for you. So again, just to get started, number 10, Cole Haan. Um, so Cole Haan, and I know this one hurts because there are a lot of guys out there that have Cole Haan. Man, it's probably one of the biggest brands that we see in our shop on I a weekly basis. I still have a pair of Cole Hans. I, I don't wear them very often, yeah. but I still got them. So. I still have a pair of Cole Hans as well. The reason we say Cole Haan is they just, for about the past 20 years, Cole Haan has taken a dip in their quality. Uh, they used to be American made. Then they were, they were sold to other brands. Nike at one point owned Cole Haan, and we get a lot of them in here that have, still have the little Nike Air Pad inside of it. And guys just don't like to let those shoes go because they're probably comfortable. But guys, there's a lot of brands out there that are much better, much better quality. The leather quality's better. And Cole Haan's are just one of those shoes when Heath and I start to try to refurbish them and resole them, my brain hurts just even thinking about what all's gonna to have to go into that refurbishment. It, it, it's just a brand that I think you could find a better brand out there than uh, what you're gonna find with Cole Haan. So that's number 10. Number nine, Bostonian. Bostonian is a name that's been around for a long time and most of the ones that we see coming into our shop today, uppers are just not the best leather. Everything seems to be almost cement constructed or if it is stitched uh the the hill blocks are just pressed particle board workings like the insoles are just uh, kind of paperish it just doesn't seem like a very quality made shoe so i definitely think that is one that you can get a better deal on number eight on our list of shoes that you should avoid aldo i've owned a couple of pair of aldo back in the day too uh i, I used to go by that shop and i saw the great looking shoes and I just had to have a pair. So yes, I've owned Aldo. But now I walk by it and all I see is just cheaply made shoes that are trying to keep that you know high fashion edge. And really folks, I, I just would not waste my money on Aldo at all. There may be a lot of great shoes in there that, that look nice. I, but if you're wanting to really you, you know stretch your dollar and make those shoes last, Trust me, I would not even step foot in Aldo. Uh, just not a shoe that is going to last you for a long time. All right, the next one, number seven. Some of y'all are gonna not like this one, Florsheim. Florsheim, back in the day, I mean dad probably wore Florsheim. They were made impeccable back in the day. They were a staple and people still, if you get on, a, uh, on eBay and you get you know, an old 1950s, 60s pair of Florsheim Imperials, look at the price that they're probably gonna go for if they're in decent condition. So that just goes to show you where Florsheim started to where they are today. Even some of the Florsheim Imperials that we have coming here, quality of it, I think you know, a lot of exporting has been done with these things and, and it's just, it's not what our granddads wore on their feet. Yeah. So big disappointment on that one. Yeah, and just to follow up real quick, again, floor shine as a whole, I would completely stay away from. Just a quick caveat to that, if you are gonna stick with floor shine, stick with the Imperials. Uh, they are still Goodyear welted, they are still double stacked leather, um, rubber heels and tacks and whatnot. I just think you could be better served going to the, the older vintage floor shines if you could find some of those out there. But again, just kind of stick stay away from uh, the, the, the new floor shines being put out. Number six on our list for the top shoes you'd stay away from in 2020, Steve Madden. Okay guys, I can't tell you how many Steve Madden shoes come into our shop. A lot of them are still that square toed shoe, the loafer, I, I, we see it all the time. Guys, I know it looks like a comfortable shoe. I know you can find it at Dillard's and Macy's and it's sitting right there in front of your face and you think it's a quick, easy buy. 
But trust me, that is a brand you want to stay away from if you're looking for high quality, nice shoes. Yes. Uh, it's just Steve Madden is not putting out nice shoes. They are cheaply made, low quality. The heel blocks, the soles, the uppers, everything on those is low quality. Just stay away from Steve Madden. All right, the next one on our list is number five, Kenneth Cole. Kenneth Cole is one of those names that 90s and the early 2000s, it was just one of those designer names. It was like, you know, Calvin Klein. But uh, Kenneth Cole's shoes, very cheaply made. Uh, find a whole lot of quality in these shoes. They are more or less gonna be made for your one-time wear. Um, so if, you, if you're looking at them, just skip over them, save your pennies, and go, you know, invest in something a little bit better. All right, guys, number four, Calvin Klein. We're going to have another episode or another video where we talk about designer shoes, uh, but we decided to throw Kenneth Cole and Calvin Klein into this mixture just because those two brands are very prevalent in department stores nowadays. And let's face it, most guys out there, that's where you're buying your shoes. You're still going to the mall, you're buying them in department stores. Calvin Klein is the same as Steve Madden, the same as Kenneth Cole very cheap quality there's it's generally not a shoe that when you want to have it refurbished that it's going to be a shoe that is meant to be refurbished um, sure we can try ripping you know ripping the shoe apart and really yeah. that's what it does when we try to take these shoes apart to refurbish them it rips the shoe because they are not meant to be refurbished it is like he said on the last one it's a one-time life shoe and when they are worn out it's best to just toss them so again stay away from calvin klein if you want to do Calvin Klein, buy their underwear, not yeah. their shoes. Uh, the next one, number three. This one is gonna also hurt a little bit. Johnson & Murphy. Woo! Okay, all right, now, now we, we say this a little bit lightly on Johnson & Murphy because there are still some uh, Goodyear welted Johnson & Murphy um, shoes. I just know that the last, within the last several years, kind of the last holdouts on the Johnson & Murphys made in America have been exported and um, they don't do recrafting anymore no. here in America. It just, yeah, we live here in Nashville, and Nashville is the original home of Johnston Murphy. Uh, Genesco, the factory that refurbished uh, all the Johnston Murphys, that made Johnston Murphys, that made their high end Johnston Murphys, it's right down the street. So we're very familiar with Johnston Murphy. And like Heath said, and we get Johnston Murphys in here all the time. And again, for 95% of their shoes, I would not any longer, except for like Heath mentioned, their higher end Goodyear Welt ones. Those are the and only even then, ones. The, the, the hill blocks aren't, that yeah. are those are just like they're not good pressed paper. Um, so yeah, they've they've definitely cut some corners in order to make a shoe cheaper that they can still offer Goodyear Weld. Number two on our list, Joseph Abood. Now I say this one because this shoe is one you do see a lot at yes. Joseph A. Bank, uh, I believe Men's Warehouse. I think I saw some the other day at Dillard's. Uh, it's another brand that is very prevalent out there. Um, I, I was actually quite surprised when recently I was doing some research on Joseph Aboud and found out that a lot of his clothing, a lot of his suits are still made here in the United States. So kudos to him for that. Uh, but when it comes to their shoes, they are not. They fall into the same category as most of the shoes that we have mentioned today, and they are not good quality. So for you guys that go into jo Joseph A. Bank or some of those shoes or some of those stores to buy your clothes, please do not grab a pair of Joseph Abood and throw those up to be rung up at the cash register. Go somewhere else and look for your quality shoes and uh, save your money. And another thing is if you're going to a store where you're going to be buying a suit, you don't want to say like, I'm going to buy my suit and while I'm here, I'll get my shirt and I'll get my tie and go ahead and throw in a pair of shoes. Yeah. So it's sometimes a it's one stop best. shop is not always the best. the best thing here. All right. And the number one is Stacy Adams. Stacy Adams. I cannot tell you how many Stacy Adams have come in here. The hill block, the hill block. is just, <laughs> it's plastic. It's hard giant, plastic. Hard plastic that cracks all the time. Um, We're able to take off a hill block off of most every shoe out there except for Stacy Adams. That is how bad their heel blocks They're are. They're stapled into like a rubberish step sole. So even while you're trying to take the heel block off, it's stapled. That ought to be yeah. your big thing. It's stapled onto the shoe. So when trying to get it off and it cracks, I can't tell you how many times I've cut my finger <laughs> just because it breaks and the sharp edges of plastic yeah. have nicked my hand. And then 
when, by the time you get it off, you've already like ripped half the sole. So the sole then has to yeah. be replaced. So it's just a horribly constructed shoe and I would definitely stay away from Stacy Adams. Okay guys, so that completes our list for the top 10 brands that we would stay away from in 2020. Now I know the next question you're gonna start asking us, okay, well if you tell us not to buy these, what shoes should we buy? I'm gonna put some links to other videos that we've done in the description below. Definitely check those out. I will also throw in some other brands that you may wanna look at. Um, in, in this upcoming year, we plan to do a lot more shoe reviews mm -hmm. and I will begin putting out videos on those. So stay tuned, subscribe to our channel uh, because you're definitely going to want to watch those videos. But again, just for the meantime, I'll throw a lot of brands uh, that we do recommend or that you should look into in the description below. Again, these are our opinions based on our professional experience. You can save the hate mail. If you are in love with one of these brands, then I'm sorry. But once again, everybody's entitled to their opinion. Yep. Again, guys, we appreciate you watching. We wish you the best in 2020. Uh, again, we hope you subscribe to our channel and follow along. I think it's going to be an exciting year. Uh, leave some comments below. Let us know your opinions and what you think. Uh, and until next time, have a great day.